Repair Clinic encourages you to perform this procedure safely. In this video, we will show one or more of these icons to alert you when to use caution. Most gas furnace repairs will require some disassembly. Before you attempt this, you should turn off the power to the furnace and shut off the gas supply as well. To gain access to components like the gas valve, flame sensor, and igniter, use a flathead screwdriver to unthread the screws, securing the upper access panel, and remove the panel. To remove the gas valve, use pipe wrenches to separate the gas supply pipe union. Unthread the gas inlet pipe from the gas valve. Note the location of the wires connected to the gas valve, then disconnect them. Disconnect the upper flame rollout switch wires as well. Use a quarter inch socket or nut driver to remove the screws securing the gas manifold and valve to the burner box. Note the orientation of the valve on the manifold, then unthread the valve. Before you replace or install a new gas valve, apply some sealant to the threads of the manifold. Now thread the manifold into the outlet port on the valve. And make sure the valve is orientated properly. Align the manifold orifices in the burner tubes as you position the manifold on the burner box. Replace the screws to secure. Remember to secure the grounding wire under the lower right screw. Connect the wires to the appropriate terminals on the valve. and reconnect the flame rollout switch wires. Confirm that the gas valve switch is in the on position. Apply sealant to the threads of the gas valve pipe, then thread the pipe into the gas valve assembly. Realign the gas pipes and secure the union. Turn the gas supply back on and apply a dish soap and water solution to the pipe connections to verify there are no gas leaks. If you need to remove components like the draft inducer assembly, the pressure switches, or the blower assembly, you will need to detach the lower access panel as well as the upper panel. To uninstall the draft inducer assembly, first use a quarter inch socket or nut driver to unthread the mounting screws, securing the pressure switch assembly to the support rail. Detach the pressure hose from the draft inducer assembly 
and move the pressure switch assembly out of the way. Next, disconnect the motor wire harness. Remove the screw to release the motor grounding wire. Be aware you may need to disassemble the junction box to access the grounding wire screw. Now loosen the retaining clamps securing the draft inducer assembly boot to the exhaust pipe. Unthread the four mounting screws to fully remove the assembly. Reinstall or replace the draft inducer assembly by aligning the boot on the exhaust pipe as you position the assembly on the collection box. Thread the mounting screws to secure. Tighten the retaining clamp to secure the boot to the exhaust pipe. Connect the motor wire harness and secure the grounding wire between the junction box and side panel. Reassemble the junction box as necessary. Realign the pressure switch assembly on the support rail then replace the screws to secure. Attach the pressure hose to the port on the draft inducer assembly. To uninstall the blower assembly, first release the spring clamps securing the drain trap hoses to the collection box and exhaust pipe and pull the hoses free. Detach the drain hose as well. Next, remove the screws securing the drain trap mounting bracket. Fully remove the drain trap assembly. Note the orientation of the thermostat wires connected to the control board, then loosen the screws to disconnect them. Cut the zip tie securing the wire harnesses. Now unthread the screws securing the blower assembly support rails. Carefully slide the assembly out. To remove the blower motor, use an adjustable wrench to loosen the blower wheel set screw. Now set the blower assembly on its side. Note the orientation of the motor wires connected to the control board then disconnect them. To ensure the capacitor is discharged, place a screwdriver with an insulated handle across the terminals. Now disconnect the capacitor wires. and remove the screw to release the grounding wire. Note the orientation of the blower motor, then use a 3 8 inch socket to unthread the motor bracket mounting screws.
Lift off the motor and bracket assembly. This may require some effort. Cut the zip tie securing the wires to the support arm. Note the position of the bracket in relation to the wires and measure the distance between the bracket and the shaft end of the motor. Secure the nut with a wrench and use a 7 16th inch socket to loosen the bolt to release the motor from the bracket assembly. Remove the support arms and slide off the bracket. Reinstall or replace the motor by first inserting it into the mounting bracket. Align the motor wires with the hole in the bracket and insert the support arms. Make sure the shaft end of the motor is the correct distance from the bracket. Then tighten the nut and bolt to secure. Now insert the shaft of the motor into the blower wheel as you position the support arms on the housing. Rethread and tighten the mounting screws. Secure the wires to the support arm with a zip tie. Connect the motor wires to the appropriate terminals on the control board. Connect the capacitor wires as well. Secure the grounding wire. Return the blower assembly to its upright position. Center the blower wheel in the housing. Align the set screw with the flat side of the motor shaft and tighten the set screw. Now realign the blower assembly support rails on the slides and push the assembly into place. Rethread the screws to secure. Reconnect the thermostat wires. Use a zip tie to remove any slack in the wire harnesses. Reposition the drain trap assembly in the cabinet and rethread the screws to secure the mounting bracket. Reattach the hoses to the appropriate ports on the collection box and exhaust pipe. Secure with the clamps as necessary. Reattach the drain hose as well. Realign the lower access panel and rethread the screws.
realign the upper access panel, and secure it with the screws. With the furnace fully reassembled, turn the power supply back on, and your furnace should be ready for use.